Go. <laughs> All official now. Uh, welcome to Wiki Speed Stand Up 2015, November. Gosh, does anyone know the date? 12th or something? 12th. Oh. oh wow, that was that was a random guess. Um, I'll uh, I'll kick us off uh, with the stand up portion of the of the video conference. Last week I uh, only had a few hours in the shop. Uh, it's been a very busy travel season, and in fact. From now till Christmas, I think I'll only have 24 hours. I think I'll only have one 24-hour stretch in Seattle um, between now and Christmas. So I'll, I'll try to be getting remote work done. That said, I did spend a few hours in the shop in the last week. I used that to groom the backlog to prepare our current intern, our winter intern, David Bell. So he remained unblocked. And I did get just a little bit of work done, but almost nothing. I did then online from a plane flight. I finally got uh, GoGo in-flight internet, and it seems to work sometimes depending on the plane route, but it means I'm able to do some remote wiki speed stuff while I'm in the air, which is cool. I'm happy about it. Yeah. It was expensive. It was like $694 for a year. Luckily, my work is, is paying for it. So awesome. And I do plenty of work stuff on the plane too, so that should be fair and righteous. Um, I ordered more suspension bushing blocks for more copies of suspension B31. It seems to be working well. Uh, that polyurethane is back ordered from McMaster Car, but they're the cheapest source I know of so far. So I did use them, and I think it's still another week out until they even ship those bushing blocks. So they're ordered. I did order the brake calipers from Michael Lolchek. His suspension has been sitting wrapped and beautiful, ready to send, but I didn't have brake calipers. And I originally thought, well, he can just pick up Honda Civic brake calipers in Canada, and then I don't have to pay import duties or shipping. And I felt worse and worse and worse about it, because the online listing of the suspension clearly mentioned brake systems included. So I ordered those, and uh, I think they'll arrive by the time I'm home on Saturday. And uh, if I'm lucky, I'll unbox them if they're there and, and finally get two of the four suspensions sent off to Michael Ultra. Um, uh, David Bell then, with the backlog that I that I groomed, he then did awesome on the ground work. Our current winter intern, he completed the V31 rear suspension on car number eight. I have a photo of that, but it's on my phone, and I didn't get it onto this laptop before I started the call. I'll, I'll send the photo to the team, and at least be in the team email list. Um, he made an enhancement to the V31 rear suspension that has a little bit more dampening even though it's an almost no damping suspension, but at no cost to the hypothesis I was trying to test. So I'm a total fan. He then converted the front suspension to use it, but ran out of bushing block material. So the rear suspension, the best I can tell, is done. The front suspension is really close, but it's blocked by the bushing material order, which I think will be shipped a week from now. Uh, we'll see. Um, he then completed the machining of a much longer windshield wiper arm, which is needed for the size of the windshield being prototyped on the car. It has a nice steep rake for aerodynamics. So that means a long windshield wiper. And it's a single center mount windshield wiper. I'll uh, send a photo update of that as well. Again, I wish I had it here on this laptop. It's on my phone because uh, he texted it to me. Um, that uh, windshield wiper arm has been in progress for several sprints. I had machined part of it. Uh, another David, David Mullen, had cut part of it, and David Bell finally finished and installed it. Now, I haven't tested it in person myself, but in the photo, it looks done. Uh, but I'll hold final validation and done until I'm in the shop to check it myself. But I think it might be done. Um, David Bell then completed attaching the windshield module on the car number eight, and then he raked the driveway. For those of you that have been to the Wiki Speed Shop, that's a sizable task. It's a, it's a long driveway winding down to the shop and raked it and then put the leaves into the wilderness area to uh, compost in our permaculture setup. So totally thrilled about that. Um, next week, I'll be traveling for work the entire week. Um, and in fact, pretty much from now till Christmas, I'm on the road. If there's anything I get done, I hope it to be boxing Michael Wolchek's brake calipers and if I have brake rotors as well, that'll finish the setup and it'll finally be shipped. The rear suspension, half of the order. Um, gosh, this has dragged on for eons. 
But uh, if I get one thing done, I hope it's that. Um, other work, uh, I'll update the test plan for the V31 suspension so that if David Bell has time amongst his other classes, he can perform the, the drop testing on V31. Depending on that, how that goes, I'll either be attempting CAD updates to suspension V31 or moving on to an entirely new module, which um, I hope are enhancements to the electric drive module that's currently in Bay 4. So we have a Warp 11 motor connected to a bunch of old, antique, I'd say, lead-acid batteries. And uh, the, it's not currently working. I believe everything is set except I think it's just the potentiometer on the accelerator pedal is, needs to be replaced. So I need to figure out what type of potentiometer needs to be there and, and order it. So uh, that will be depending on what's up with the suspension. Blocking issues are not in the shop hardly at all. Uh, almost for the rest of the year. Um, luckily, there's a motivated and very clever winter intern in the shop, but still, that, that's a block that I'm not there to be hands-on. I'd sure like that. Um, other blocks, I don't know what type of potentiometer is on car number four, uh, which has a hybrid electric drive that I was just discussing in a Warp 11 motor. If I knew what type of potentiometer is there, like a wool check might be able to tell me what to try to replace it, or I might be able to order another one myself or attempt to repair. But I, I honestly have never done accelerator pedals for electric vehicles before at all. I don't really know at what I'm looking. And I'm not in the shop right now in person anyway, but David Bell is. Uh, so that's a block. And the other block is that the bushings are back ordered for suspension B31, but I don't believe that's easily resolvable without finding another inexpensive supplier. Uh, and they're coming in about a week, so I'm not too worried about that one. Uh, that's what I've got for me. Who would like to go next? I don't, <clears throat> I don't see anybody unmuting yet, so uh, I guess I'll go next. takes me a little while to get started because I have a few extra clicks when I'm talking here. Okay, so uh, last week, I um, I did not get to go to the Burleson, Texas wiki speed shop because uh, I was uh, working on some homework and finishing up uh, school. Um, so I tried to focus. I kind of knew early on I was not going to get to go to the shop. So... Something I finished up today was I updated the website. It was, uh, I don't know, about 15 plugins, five themes, and the WordPress version. Uh, that also led me, and, uh, you know, I didn't even put this in my list for next week, so I need, I need to either add it or remember it now, or I'll just say it now so I don't have to remember it. But a uh, it, it, uh, little discovered work that I ran into, and I've seen this once before. I'm assuming it's when I update the WordPress version. It resets the database in a way that makes our Google Analytics no longer work. Like you have to basically go find the Google Analytics code and copy and paste it back into, and then I think everything works again. Um, last time I found out that happened, it was like a, a month or two after we weren't getting analytics anymore and no one was using it right then, so no one noticed. But uh, I think I just broke it today, so probably tomorrow I will fix that. <laughs> um, okay, so knowing I wasn't going to get to the shop, I tried to, at least on the way home, make a few stops. Uh, I'm going to, I'll do, I'll do my, what I wrote down out of order a little bit. So first I bought some, since we're doing demos, I'll just show them. I bought uh, these, they're not exact size or anything, and these aren't for the Wikispeed car. This is to mount our new drill press. To its metal table. Um, the instructions did not say what size bolts were needed. It just said bolt it to the table. So I had the fun job of walking like seven aisles back and forth at the, the Home Depot to go find a device that was made by the same manufacturer that didn't have a bolt already through a hole in it and then go grab a bolt and see which ones fit. <laughs> So, um, and th this was slightly small, but uh, was the closest I could find, and will work just fine to, to mount that down uh, to the table. Uh, the other thing I did uh, was I purchased, uh, when, I, when I was there, 
a lot of safety equipment because our safety shelf was not at the best. Like it, it has a lot of gloves um, and like one pair of eye protection right now. So I um, well here's two examples. So I bought some safety glasses and some safety goggles, and then I also got the cheapest way to do ear protection, which I would prefer, you know, some big ear muffs, but at least this will help people that don't want to destroy their ears when they're using uh, power equipment. Um, also, not at the same store, but I do want to show this. I won't show the rest of it, but I bought a magnifying glass. It, and this is so that I can try to do the center punches a little bit better on these angle plates that we're working on, because it's actually harder than I thought to get that center punch lined up perfectly. And I think even with this, perfectly is a relative concept. Um, also, just a quick, quick glance, uh, this isn't all of them, but I bought more, more post-it notes and more colors so that I can keep track of all the stuff we're doing uh, that's dry erase and uh, sharpening. So that uh, probably wraps up actually what I did last week. Um, so for next week, I'm, uh, I want to go ahead and order this drill guide because I, I, think, I, I think what we've decided um, discussing with the other people that come to the shop with me is that what we want to do is pick a, a, a portion of the angle plates that we have uh, just to test and learn on, uh, knowing full well that we're probably not going to get great precision with it, but at least learn the techniques. Um, and I know how much each one of them costs so we can purchase later to replace. Um, but what I want to do is get a, that, that drill guide so that most of the parts, if not all, um, we know are precision made. Uh, I also, of course, want to fix that Google Analytics problem I ran across today. Oh, and uh, something I looked at today. And uh, I... I since you're on the call, Joe, um, I'll, I'll wait uh, till open discussion to tell you how, but I did write down here, I want to tell Joe how to update the banner on the website because I did find that, that method. It's very easy. Um, it's, it does not require any coding or anything. It's just right there a few clicks away. Um, and, of course, I had to put here, as always, I need to work on the own cloud thing. So for hopefully this week, I have no idea. But if I knock out all the other awesome shit, I will do the, the large file upload test or contact the person who's interested in helping with it. Um, yeah, my, my, my block is I, I, I just I can't uh, this this week and I already know next week is no good. And that leads us into Thanksgiving and the holidays. So I, I can't I, I did, couldn't go to the shop and I can't go to shop to the shop this week. So um, my real block is not getting to be at the shop as much as I would like because that's where all the really good experiments and tests happen. That's where I learn. And I think we did not go into uh, retrospective and process for me yet, so that would be it for me. I could go next. I'm. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, now. I can. Okay. Um, actually, I'll uh, plug in my uh, headset. A little better. Don't just. Little? Yeah okay. yeah. okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't really do much this week. Uh, I, yeah. I was hoping to get to some things, but I'm. Uh, I'm in a kind of uh, first uh, year-end reporting for my first corporation, Canadian corporation I ever had. So uh, that that's been like a block for me. I guess I got some things I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> My income uh, file a return uh, and file a uh, uh, a year end uh, uh, like three questions and answering what the purpose. Anyway, um, it, it kind of reminds me of the and so I'm what I'm thinking of what to do this week and kind of reminds me of the, just all the paperwork for the um, that we did for the service mark and the uh, uh, charitable status. So. Um, 
Uh, one thing I just thought of that I'm going to try and check this out, out this week is do we have to do anything to maintain the service mark and on what anniversary? So uh, I, I'm going to uh, look at the original uh, material or at the website for the patent office to check that out. That's one thing uh, I wanted to uh, keep track of. And um, I think uh, I already sent the thing for the 501C to you. I don't like, I would rather do hands on stuff, but I, I haven't got to it. And I've got a nice work bench down in my garage, but I haven't done, done much. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's that's it for me. Fantastic, Lauren. And I'd completely forgotten that there might be something we need to do to maintain the service mark. I'm so glad you thought of it. Thank you so much. Um, perfect. Michael Wolchek, I think this again brings it to you. Uh, I, I did hear you start to go a second ago. Uh, would you mind, uh, would you mind going? Sure. Uh, last week, I edited and posted those two uh, tests um, on Saturday. I did shop for new Bluetooth headset, but I decided to be the only one I'm going to try. Turned out I had two devices that were both trying to pair with it, and that's why I had all these options. There was only one of them. Um, I messed around with Google Hangouts Live. So you can do kind of like we do here with the uh, uh, the cameras that aren't actually talking right now to the bottom of the screen. So you can actually take synchronized video. I'm trying to show gauges. Um, I added a large aluminum heat sink to my AC controller. It's just the base from the, from the battery pack that I bought. No testing so far, just sitting on top and it's not cool, but it's sitting there. I finally picked up the Android app so that most of the tech is on the internet. Unfortunately, it doesn't work at all. I'm going to make a few because camera triggers do not waste your money on it. Um, so I've got the safety shelf and my grass set up. Um, I clear the safety room, uh, a little place to put the safety shelf, and the snack shelf. That's since I have a cat in the garage, I can't actually put it in the garage. I cleaned up my garage so that the pond will almost fit. And this is for my wife so that we can continue to do this. And I found a whole lot of pockets, a 36 inch photograph from the table saw on the photo stand. Um, so that pretty much wraps up what I did last week. Uh, next week, bring in my EP more. Uh, and the EP can do a lot of EP. I've been shifting to fixing the parts, but I think this will block now, so I'm going to finish up. I'll be doing a little bit of the uh, setup that I have in the garage right now. And then, uh, I guess, um, the third one. Description, uh, my new deal with the kind of controller he has on that electric module so I can figure out what kind of fault it is. It probably makes more economic sense to ship all of the suspension modules at once than shipping them individually. And I found a cheap CNC made from scraps um, that you could probably possibly in a second one. Dr. Lolchak, I think I heard seven eight of your stand up. There was some stand static. That said, I, I do think I got the majority. There's some key parts I wish I understood better, but I think I got the majority, and it sounds amazing. Uh, I found it hilarious that both you and Chris Wallace improved your safety shelves in the last sprint. Um, gosh, how random is that? Totally, totally worth it and useful. 
And I, and I thought I heard that your cat raided the snack shelf, which I found completely hilarious, also being a, a, a cat steward myself. And the idea of maybe a CNC uh, tool, a computer numerically controlled machine in your shop, oh my gosh, that's just blowing up your capability. That sounds, that sounds amazing that, that that could be happening. I'm just happy and a half. And thank you for pointing out that if I figure out what type of controller the car has, maybe you can help me understand what type of accelerator pedal, what type of potentiometer it would require. That makes perfect sense. I should have thought of that myself. I didn't. That's how new I am to this thing, to electric uh, vehicle control. Um, I, I know the person who put the controller in, so even though I'm not in the shop, I can email him. Dave Horman hopes. So I'm going to do that after standing. The controller's in this thing. Maybe I can block this, even unblock this even while I'm remote. Thank you so much. Is there anyone on the call with a stand-up who has not yet given it? Perfect. Let's do, uh, if you guys don't mind, retrospective. Uh, although, first, uh, for role in the group, um, uh, nine. I felt like the superhero last week. I prioritized cards on the backlog, and this guy, David Bell, just did them. It was amazing. And as far as I can tell, he did them really well. Uh, I'm not in the shop to see it in person, but from the phone photos, it looks totally awesome. Um, yeah, in, in role, you can't ask for better than that, I don't think. I just put sticky notes on the wall, and magically people did them. It was, it was epic. Um, uh, in terms of company, mm, I'm glad our website now does show what we actually can make, and the store now is full of stuff we actually can produce. <laughs> That's much better. But I still think we could be a much more disruptive and capable company with with, with very minor tweaks. I, I, I feel it. Um, I'd say five is, is my opinion of, of, of the of Wikispeed as a company. We're totally cool and badass. We could be game-changingly cooler with a minor tweak, I think. I've just got to figure out what that might be with, with the team, I suspect. Um, in terms of a process improvement suggestion, um, gosh, I should probably, I, I received a, a sprint burn down from a regular team member, Lorena, who works at a company called Tableau and they produce scrum tools. Uh, she volunteers at the wiki speed shop because she loves scrum stuff and wanted to learn about hardware stuff. She'd never even worked on a car or anything like that. And, uh, She's a hilarious lady, too. I'm so glad she comes by the shop. She created a burn down of all Wikispeed's recorded velocity for the last maybe two years. What I'll propose as a process improvement is use that to calculate our historic velocity and see how many points the team is likely to get done based on what it has in the past between now and New Year's and share that velocity with the team. What that should let us do is lobby each other to say what we would want to do in that velocity. So what should our New Year's demo be? New Year's 2016, whenever we're back from our New Year's party or whatever it is, we look at a demo video or we publish a demo video. What do we want it to be? And I don't know that yet, but what I'll propose as a process improvement, if I can figure out our historic velocity, and I think Lorena calculated it for me, I just need to read the chart, uh, sharing that with the team, along with our reference stories about how big certain things are in, in point sizes. So team members can start brainstorming and wishing on what they'd like to lobby for us to do uh, by Christmas. Scrum works with a single product owner to decide what we're gonna do. I'm interested in trying to disrupt that a little bit, seeing if it works by crowdsourcing that among people who are interested and involved and saying what do we as a large group to do. I don't know if this experiment will work, but that's dependent on me at least sharing what the historic velocity is uh, to know how many points we're likely to get done between now and New Year's as a group. Um, I'll propose that. Who would like to go next with retrospective? I'm 
Um, for the team level, we're going to stay with what we call half a group. Um, we can do that as quickly as we'd like. And uh, there are some people on stand up, which is pretty good. We've been there for a while. Um, Comes with some improvement. I'm actually not proposing a new one. I'm going to implement um, a previous one where we are going to show the uh, do something to make sure she's happy that I'm part of Wikispeed and that I will continue to be. So she's coming back from uh, her trip here on Monday, so I have to do something, get the video up and finish it with my next next uh, one and uh, okay, so what do you That was awesome. Who'd like to follow that up? I'm gonna try. I do want to point out right before I do my try here that uh, that Michael, um, your microphone could be better. It it sounds like I'm uh, tr uh, to me. I felt like I'm translating a foreign language and getting it right. So it makes me feel awesome, but. <laughs> But still, yeah, it's a little hard to understand uh, the semi quieter parts of a uh, of speech there. Um, either way, going in. Uh, so for me, like a seven. Um, I think I've worked really hard the last couple of years to get a shop open, to really get hands on with building a car. And uh, the weeks that I don't get to go to the shop for whatever reason are very frustrating to me. Like that's that's like that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be all the time, and I'm right now only even allowed to be there a few hours of one day a week. So, uh, yeah, definitely a seven, because probably lower even, because I just didn't get to get to the shop. I mean, I tried to do everything I could. Awesome, not at the shop, but I think all the awesome happens at the shop. Um, for the team, uh, I, I think I, I put an, uh, an seven or eight here. Um, I think everybody is is uh, still just just producing the most awesome thing we've ever seen. But I want to kind of go back to what Joe was just talking about as a company. We, I was thinking about this today. As a company, the structure of of how Wikispeed is set up is the most awesome thing that anyone has ever seen. But people don't know that. So my process would be like tell a friend, like like tell a friend why. This is the most awesome thing that you do. Um, I, I thought about this a little bit too because I actually spent a huge amount of this week relearning Esperanto, and it's very hard to tell people why that's awesome. But it's actually easier to tell people why Wikispeed is awesome. But uh, Esperanto has two million um, participants. Wikispeed probably. Uh, I, I just want to in the smaller region. I think it's plenty, but it's smaller. But yeah, I think more of us need to tell. Tell friends, tell why we do it, why we like it, why we think it's the most awesome thing. And that could just be sharing it on social media. It could just be having a glass of wine with someone and telling them. So that leaves it done for me. Lauren, I see your lips moving in the video, but it looks like you're muted. It looks like you're on mute. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't take, sorry. Oh, okay. I can hear you just fine now. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So um, I, I, I give myself a one because I came on the meeting. And, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, the team is always a 10 for me. I know it. Uh, but I, I, I'm really interested in your evaluation, Joe, because I, I think that means... Great things are about to happen. <laughs> I, I've got a feeling that, uh, like, that it sounds like a cusp to me. <laughs> uh, and uh, the process improvement, I like yours. I'm wondering, uh, if, so if, could you uh, nod your head or whatever? Uh, is this Tableau the data display company? Yes, yes, it's that Tableau. Yeah, okay. So I've been using. I've been, uh, that's on my resume now because I used it last fall. And I've heard about it for years, actually. A friend of mine was in on the, uh, the early 
uh, starting of that company. Uh, so it, and it, and they're very good, very interesting. They started as mapping, and then they expanded into the whole data display. Uh, and, and it's been, uh, I think, probably 15 years or something. Anyway, very interesting. And uh, uh, yeah, I, it sounds like a really cool thing that you, you suggested. And uh, I think that's it for me. So I endorse that. Fantastic, Lauren. Thanks. So we have several pro proposals for process improvement, which makes me very happy in my tummy. Sometimes it's hard to think of them. I'm really glad we have a backlog of potential process improvements and have to pick which one might be the most impactful of the ones we could do. Here are the proposals on the table. One is Joe shares uh, the current velocity as calculated by Lorena. That doesn't mean it's perfectly right, but it's better than what we have. It's more data than we've ever had to go on or not for a long time, maybe not until North American International Audit Show. Um, anyway, so one is share the, the velocity and how many points are likely left in the year. Another is refocus on a previous process improvement, which Michael Wolchek has already decided is the best choice for his shop. And, and I, I agree, given the timing. Focus on your spouse and do something to delight them and see if you can't increase their understanding and happiness of the fact that you like to do some wiki speed stuff and get some wiki speed stuff done. Uh, that's brilliant. And Dr. Lolchek, in your case, the timing makes perfect sense for that. And a third is try to tell at least one more person why wiki speed is actually really worth doing. Why it's why it's awesome. Why the way it tries to run itself is, is pretty cool. Why what it tries to produce is pretty cool. Um, why its members are my best friends, maybe some of your best friends do, what, why it's cool. Um, man, those are all really good. Uh, I'll break form because a process improvement is, uh, by definition, something that should be visible in the next sprint's velocity. The next sprint velocity should go up because of that experiment. In this case, gosh, how can I say it? All three of these are just no brainers. They're just such good things to do. And I don't even think they're experiments. They're just righteous, good action. It's like, let's stop being not as cool as we could be and be as cool as we could be. Okay, why don't we do that? Um, and I will say, uh, I'll, I'll propose that we attempt to do as many of those as, as, as sustainable and fun in the next sprint, trying to delight our spouse if we can tell one or more people why we actually love this wiki speed thing. And I'm also going to try to share the velocity from uh, Lorena that she calculated using Tableau to see how many points we likely have left that we're likely to deliver in the remainder of 2015. Uh, I'll propose those. Does anyone have a counter proposal or a refinement to that proposal? Okay, from the head nods and the timing of the head shakes, I think that passed unanimously. We have process improvements, fantastic. Um, gosh, I'll attempt to do at least one of those tonight. Um, that said, it's already 9.42 p.m. here. Uh, we'll see, we'll see what I can do. I'll try to get one of those done tonight. That concludes the scrum ceremonies that we need to do to run this little business for another sprint, for another week, and opens up the conversation into open talk. I know Chris Wallace had parking lotted an item already. Uh, Chris, if you could very quickly tell me where I navigate to update the WikiSpeed header, I'd love to know. Um, please do. So um, if I had it pulled up right now, it'd be a lot easier to do this. But on the, the left-hand side, it's I think that the upper level menu is called appearance and there's uh i think it's appearance there's something okay. something like that and then uh yeah. and then there's a sub menu that just says header and uh, in okay. he and then once you click on header on the then it becomes on the left hand side a choice to pick that and just upload another file i'm sure that it has and it should tell you what size picture it wants but uh, but yeah, it's just the, it's just clicks. There's no code required. It's really just a few clicks 
down to drill down to it. Perfect. And if you have any, if you have any issues with it, let me know because I just found it today, so I, I have fresh knowledge of this and can can help you along with it if there's a problem. Now that you say it, that sounds totally straightforward. I don't have an image to replace the header, so now that I know that it doesn't require PHP or or some cool jive like that, and it's totally doable, now I'll start trying to think. Where would I get a, a an even cooler, more representative of what we're trying to do now? Header, and if that happens, I'll I'll put it in. That's so fantastic! Thank you, sir. You blocked a wish of mine. Awesome, awesome. I know I, I ran across it a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot to. I think I looked into it and then forgot to relay that information. Hey, I'm thrilled right now. Thank you. So, Any, Warren, go. Did we actually make charitable stuff? Oh, uh, that, that's, uh, uh, that one's, uh, I sent Joe the, uh, the, uh, the form is uh, pretty much all filled out except for a, uh, a fairly, uh, challenging grid of financial, financials for the past three years. And that, that is, uh, passed over to Joe. Yeah, and, and I got all that data. That data is in Dropbox, by the way. So somebody who got really excited and drank a bottle of whiskey and a carafe of coffee could probably fill it in. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to do it. I just have not at all for like months. Um, but that data is in Dropbox, so it could be done. Uh, all of our tax filings for the last three years break down the data by that type, and it's in the WikiSpeed Dropbox under Document. Then um, I'll, I'll try and take a look at it. Um, I uh, had, I think I had Dropbox from you, but I don't know that I've got it anymore. So um, I'm thinking maybe uh, I'll correspond with Chris. Do you know about Dropbox, Chris? Chris knows about all of our files because of the thing that's cooler than yeah, Dropbox's yeah. own cloud, which yeah. one is, we'll, we'll, we'll experiment with more. And Chris, I won't sweat that at all. I'll just be happy one blessed day when we try it for reals. And that might be in 10 years. That might be tonight. I, and I'm fine to do it. Probably not tonight, but hopefully well well sooner than 10 years. Um, yeah, I can I can weed through some Dropbox and, and find the files we're looking for if you give me more information than I was just yeah, or, listening or for right tell now. Tell me how to, how to reactivate it. Okay. Or get at it myself. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I had a couple of things that could have been process improvements, but I thought they might have been off topic. So oh. I was going to mention them now. Brief things. Yeah. Uh, one of them is, um, uh, Joe, in, in some ways, you're the face of, Wiki, of Wikispeed or, or, or the, the uh, embodiment of Wikispeed, like it or not, I, in my opinion. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I, I thought would be interesting would be, uh, uh, like, where in the world is Joe? <laughs> that would be something confusing and often updated. He's yeah. Into Maybe. <laughs> is there a way on, uh, on uh, to do it automatically on uh, Hangouts? Oh, display man. your location. So I've got a phone with me all the time. And it's going to find my phone feature, you know, that I've turned on for my wife so she can always see where I am. Right. I wonder if there's an app I can download that says, no, I'm really cool with it, world. Share it all the time. And if we can embed the partner to that app on the website or something, that'd be totally down. I am that type of person. Um, and wouldn't that be cool? Just walking through some random city, someone might high five me and say, <laughs> 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 oh, I get but I mean, what a <laughs> okay, okay. The, and the other one is uh, thinking in the terms of the transit and consumer culture, uh, how Wikispeak could fit in. Uh, one of the things I thought, because I, I, I don't anticipate buying or building a complete, I might build a part, that'd be my goal to build a part one day, but I don't anticipate maybe even ever... Uh, I have seen one because I think I saw one at the at the shop. Well, I shot, I did, but uh, anyway, uh, I, in in the context of the, I'm a, I background in sociology, so in the context of car shares and other things, uh, and and to go a little step further is yes, 
I've heard of car shirts that have cool cars. You know, generally you think it's a Prius, it's something very uh, like uh, Birkenstock. But oh, I do think those are cool cars, but I hear you. I, I, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think Prius are, are cool too, but I think some of them are talking about, you know, so like somebody's going to a premier or something like that. And they want to, and they car share. So they want, uh, you know, uh, uh, something sporty or, or impressive. And, and actually I have a, I have a whole thing that it bugs me that we don't get buy-in to come out of the consumer culture and not have a car because people conceive that it's going to be really boring. So I think there actually needs to be a way to, 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 uh, because there's a lot of cool technology I don't want to own, but I just want to play with it once or twice or show up in it once or something like that. So I'll throw that out there for now. And that's it. Absolutely intriguing. Your background once again has brought a train of thought that was outside what I was thinking of at the moment. And I'm grateful for it, Lauren. You are, you are a cool guy in my book. Thank you for that. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? Um, please make your spouse feel super welcome, and I'm glad you're making progress on the yard. How about that? Okay. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm making progress on the shop. It just doesn't, doesn't film well. The videos you've posted lately, I, I'm I'm loving. It's like a cascade of progress, and I appreciate that you say it's not directly WikiSpeed related. But uh, I'll say again, I'm convinced that uh, powertrains, the electric drive modules, are absolutely the near-term real future. Um, and the headway you're making there is 1,000% on target, from my understanding of where WikiSpeed needs to be. Um, and I'm trying to play catch up with what you already know about EVs, Mike. So thanks for saying it's not directly Wikispeed related. I, I respect that. At the same time, I'd like to say I believe it's completely 100% Wikispeed related. And for whatever that's worth, I mean, we're just a club, whatever that means. But uh, I love what you're publishing and I think you're highly productive lately. Uh, thank you so much. Please don't overdo it. Make sure you also make the wife feel loved and uh, trim the hedges or whatever's next. Uh, I would, I would add uh, that uh, when I tell people about WikiSpeed, they one of the first questions is, is it is it electric or is it hybrid? And um, what I always tell them is it's modular, so it it, uh, it it's happening. Love it. I would also add um, that uh, everything that uh, Michael Olchek is doing with the, the EV module is super amazing. It keeps me excited about more than likely the drivetrain we're going to end up with in um, Burleson, Texas. Um, so I'm also excited to hear that maybe in the Limwood shop we're getting an EV module. Um, and that'll probably, of course this is a probably, it's far enough off, we don't know. But in my mind right now, I'm thinking that uh, the Texas shop will probably start working on be uh, better battery technology. I think that'll fit well in with what everyone else is doing. Uh, we won't be reinventing the wheel, but hopefully helping everyone else along. So. I, I know there's only eight minutes till the top of the hour, and I've got actually a few things I'd like to do before the top of the hour. But you, you touched right on it, Chris. Um, my vision as product owner evolves every day as I learn more about what's possible. My vision for, gosh, several, almost a year, but I, I, I've been selling myself and the team short by saying, oh, I don't think we can do anything about that yet. Oh, I don't think we can do anything about that yet. But here's what it is, and honestly, maybe we can. So here's what we can do right now that I know about is we can totally make stuff out of aluminum and fiber, and we've done that well for several years. And now I, I think we actually can make our own suspension from scratch, no vended parts except raw materials. And we can already make our own chassis from scratch and our own safety structures from scratch. That makes us almost a complete vertical stack, stack provider except for the powertrain. So here's what would be totally awesome is Tesla has open sourced all their patents. 
We did that quite a while ago. And my sad, sad, dark confession is I still haven't read any of them. There's some of the coolest, most juicy stuff sitting out there on the internet, and I haven't read any of them, partly out of fear and who knows what else, and it, it's just silly. I, I need to because I know it's going to be useful, even if it's in patent language that I have to take my time to understand. It's going to be cool. And I don't even know. They might be written in plain English. I haven't even read them. Um, here's my hope. My hope is that modern battery chemistry, by modern, I mean like in the Tesla current power pack, is actually available and published. And I'm sure it's not anarchist cookbook style, just mix two cups of this with a gallon of this and suddenly have a battery. I bet it's more difficult than that. But here's the thing. I bet it's totally fucking doable with, a, with folks who really take the time to figure out the recipe and mix it in a big washing machine and pour it into plastic cake. I absolutely suspect it's completely doable. And what would actually make us, what I suspect the little change that would make us for real is if we had complete access to powertrains at the cost of material. The only way I know to do that right now is to make them ourselves. We might get a fantastic loving relationship with a vendor and they provide our train components to us at cost of materials, but I have no lead on that right now. So the higher suspicion I have is we need to make it ourselves. The sooner we get involved with team members, we attract them or become them, that are comfortable experimenting with many, many, many failed battery chemistry and ordering lithium and filling out the correct form so you can order lithium and all that crap, which is doable. This is real stuff people do. You just have to slog through it. Like we already did with making road reasonable cars, which was a deal, but we did it. If we can do that with powertrains, and my best understanding is that means making our own batteries and also winding some, winding some of our own motors, but that's even more straightforward, I think. I haven't done it yet, but I hear it's not that big a deal, really. Then I think we could actually take over the world. But to actually make the world a better place, there's another thing that I currently don't know how to do that's not that hard. Next, to, I know a little bit more about this, is we need to start making our own autonomous tech. The car's ready for it. The pedal plate is all of the controls of the entire car. So that's the only module that changes. The car's ready for autonomous drive. It has been, it's been designed that way from since day one. So starting to experiment Right? And it's backwards compatible with each of the cars we've made. It just swaps on. We, we, we thought of that. Prototyping, even a five mile per hour only, I mean, even crippled, it would be game changing for us. An autom automated drive pedal plate is honestly the top priority. But unless we have control of our own engine module, we still won't be able to produce at a rate as a, at a cost that's disruptive to the world. So that's the big picture, the best I know. I actually think we've got everything else pretty much reined in at this point. Now that we can make our own suspension, and I really do think we can, that means the only part of the car we buy right now are the brakes. And I bet we could even make those. Luckily, they're pretty cheap. But I'm not too concerned about that. There's many, many different suppliers. So we're not hedged in too tightly. That's the only part of the car that I bought on the last car with the brakes. Everything else we made from raw material. And so that means it's cheap as shit. I mean, the whole car is like a thousand bucks. It's the whole thing. I mean, it, it costs the materials. And that's even with markup from middlemen. That, that's what lets us change the world if we want to. But then it's, okay, who wants to get some five-gallon kits together and really start prototyping mixing battery chemistry? That's the next step. And after that, who wants to get involved with the Autonomous Navigating Remote Control Car Club and say, how would you like to deal with a slightly bigger remote control car and have them prototype in a safe area, like a, a closed field with bales of hay on the side and you can drink two miles an hour or something, DARPA style. Anyway, that's the bigger vision. I don't know how to solve for either of those yet, so it remains just something that gets me impossibly excited and keeps me awake at night. It makes me jump out of bed in the morning, whether I slept or not. Um, I'd, if folks have cool ideas around that, let's make the world a better place. 
Awesome. And for sure. Hey, uh, I think last week, I think that our sprint improvement was to, it was in the goal of trying to get people to swarm on a certain idea. And I think something that I already know, the terminology exists in Scrum is a sprint goal. So maybe these, these things about battery technology and, uh, and, uh, automation, autonomous vehicles, um, maybe it would be awesome to find, or maybe we should find a place to put that, that sprint goal that gets everybody riled up and, and ready to go for it. Um, but also more important to me right now, I wanted to ask, cause I've seen, um, Joe, uh, the videos from the Linwood shop on the new windshield prototype. <clears throat> what, uh, what, what are you using for the glass? It's, uh, oh gosh, it's required. We used to be allowed to use polycarbonate. Now by law, we have to use DOT safety glass. And for it to be approved by the DOT for windshields, it needs to be what's called AS1. It's a transparency metric. So we bought that from a glass shop. Uh, they make glass for skyscrapers and stuff. And some of the glass that they stock, they don't even make it. They order it from China by the shipping container. They distribute it. I don't know if anyone in the United States makes glass still, uh, which is fine. I just would rather buy local to wherever I am at the time. But um, they buy, they, it arrives in four by eight sheets. And uh, I had them cut the four by eight uh, into four foot long, so not waste material. I think it's four strips. Maybe it's three. Um, yeah, it's a DOT approved AS1 safety glass. And I got it from a glass shop in Seattle that I found by looking them up on the internet, glass shops. And I called like eight because most of them are just resellers of well, stock products. But these folks actually get the shipping containers arrived so they could sell it really cheaply and you know, they have it in bulk flat glass. Awesome. That answer my, answers my question completely because that's what I was curious about if it was dot approved because I know we looked into some other options before and that was the, the main blocking factor is whether it's safe, safer or not doesn't matter whether it's approved or not. <laughs> so. Now, the way the law is phrased, it actually is a test. So it says if you have a neat new material that passes these tests, it's road legal. Then they have a clause that says but for now, it's only DOT approved safety glass, and it must be glass. It can't be a plastic chemistry. So it's this beautiful test. I would let you test plastics. I would let you test all kinds of stuff. And then they've got this note, this note at the end that says, but you're not actually allowed. So I think what they're trying to say is show it first and then lobby us to change the law. But it's too bad the law isn't just the test. It's not just show us, which it is for most of the automotive safety code, which really impresses me. It's just tests. You have full innovation. But on the glass law, last time I read it, which was about a year ago, it actually did say, here's the test, but it actually has to be glass. Cool. Cool. Mike, look back if you're talking, all I hear is popping sounds. I was hoping you were talking, but then you just muted. Oh, I don't know. All right, guys, it's 10.01. I got excited, but I actually still have some things to do, and it's late East Coast time, and I'm getting up at 5. Ah, okay, well, such is life. I wish you all a beautiful evening. Thanks for rocking with me. Um, send emails to the team anytime. I'm going to go try to do the process improvement, and I think I know where the sprint goal needs to be published. It's the header on the WikiSpeed homepage. So if we settle on a sprint goal next sprint, I'll try to make it a graphic and stuff it in the header. Say, here's what we're working on this week. Oh, try. All right, guys. Bye for now. Good night, everybody.